Michael Weber, Artistic Director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theater. Premiering at the Carthay Circle Theater in Los Angeles, December 21st, 1937, Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves held the record as the highest-grossing sound film at the time. Adjusted for inflation, it remains one of the top ten performers at the North American box office and was the highest-grossing film of all time until it was unseated by Gone with the Wind in 1939. Development on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs began in early 1934, and one evening that same year, Disney himself acted out the entire story for his staff, announcing that the project would be produced as a feature-length film, the first ever at his studio, which, until that time, had been primarily involved in the production of animated short subjects in the Mickey Mouse and Silly Symphonies series. Both his brother and business partner Roy Disney and his wife Lillian attempted to talk Walt out of it, and the Hollywood movie industry referred to the project derisively as Disney's Folly while it was in production, even as Disney mortgaged his house to help finance the film's creation. Fifty ideas for the dwarves' names and personalities were listed in the film's proposal. The list included all of the names finally chosen, except Dopey and Doc, Dopey being the last to be developed. Some of the proposed dwarves were Awful, Blabby, Dirty, Gabby, Gaspy, Gloomy, Hotsy, Jaunty, Nifty, and Shifty. Lux Radio Theater productions were performed live in front of an audience of a thousand people who thrilled for the chance to see their favorite movie stars in person. While Disney did not want to destroy the illusion of his animated characters, so this episode had no live audience in attendance and uses recorded applause at the beginning and the end of each act with recorded audience sounds as well when needed. Disney allowed only four members of the original film cast to recreate their roles in the radio performance, but what a cast they were. While Adriana Casalotti was the actor who voiced Snow White in the original feature film, Thelma Hubbard, who plays the role in this broadcast, had done the speaking voice of Snow White for the 1938 Spanish dubbed version of the film, with Diana Castillo providing the singing voice. Additionally, Hubbard was Snow White on Disney's own radio show, the Mickey Mouse Theater of the Air, as well as creating the voice of Minnie Mouse on film. Here on the December 26th, 1938 episode of the Lux Radio Theater are, from the original film cast, Roy Atwell as Doc, Billy Gilbert as Sneezy, Maroney Olson as the Magic Mirror, Stuart Buchanan as the Huntsman and as Grumpy, with Thelma Hubbard as Snow White and special guest Walt Disney in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. <laughs> From Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Lux presents Hollywood. It's one of the most beloved folk tales of all time, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Walt Disney made it into one of the greatest pictures of all time. And tonight, for young and old, we bring it to the Lux Radio Theater. A charming story, the delightful music that you saw and heard on the screen. Aiding in tonight's production and our guest of honor is Walt Disney himself. Conducting our music is Louis Silvers. Mr. DeMille will step before the curtain in just a moment. But before he does, a word about the product that brings you this program, Lux Flakes. Lux Flakes have thousands of loyal followers all over the world because lovely women everywhere depend on these fine, gentle flakes to keep their things dainty. Their nice silk and satin underthings get regular Lux care. Yes, gentle Lux keeps nice things dainty and fresh. But it does more than that. It helps them stay new-looking longer. You see, Lux Flakes have no harmful alkali to hurt delicate materials or fade colors. It's a good thing to remember that anything safe in water alone is safe in gentle Lux. And now, your host and producer, 
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Christmas greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. One year ago, almost to the day, Walter Elias Disney was here in the Lux Radio Theater telling us about a picture he'd just completed called Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It was the first feature-length animated picture ever created. Into it had gone three years of work, of hope and daring. Over two and one-half million drawings and the services of more than 500 artists. It was therefore a rather nervous Mr. Disney who spoke to us that night. If we had tied bells on his knees, he could easily have doubled for Santa Claus' sleigh. It wasn't Mike Fright, though, that attacked Mr. Disney. It was Premier Fright. For on the night following his Lux broadcast, he was giving the world its first glimpse into animated fairyland. In the tiny hands of a little lady named Snow White lay the reputation and the future of Walt Disney. How this picture was received is history. It brought laughter and tears from the children and grown-ups of every nation. Praise came from the pulpit, from statesmen, from the press to this unassuming man, who even his switchboard operator calls Walt. Harvard and Yale gave him honorary degrees, and the world its thanks. For to all of us, he recalled our childhood. We couldn't have chosen a more popular play for Christmas than Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, nor a more appropriate guest than Walt Disney. Later on, we'll hear from him. Now we hear his masterpiece. Let's dim the lights a little. Let's sit down and shut our eyes. Forget the world and just imagine. As our curtain rises and the Lux Radio Theater presents Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. world long, long ago, a kingdom built on a mountain high lifted its turrets flecked with gold into a sapphire sky. Land of enchantment, this domain, but ruled by a queen, black-hearted, vain, jealous of her beauty, and fearful lest there be another in her realm to prove more beautiful than she. Each evening in the secret hall, she conjured up a spirit from the mirror on the wall. Slave in the magic mirror, come from the farthest space. Through wind and darkness I summon thee. Speak, let me see thy face. Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? Famed is thy beauty, majesty. But all, a lovely maid I see. Rags cannot hide her gentle grace. Alas, she is more fair than thee. Alas for her. Reveal her name. Lips red as the rose. Skin white as snow. Snow white. Your own stepdaughter and the princess of this realm. Where is this fair one now? In her tattered clothes by the witching well, she sings with the voice of a silver bell. Want to know a secret? Promise not to tell.
Oh. Did I frighten you? Who are you? I am prince of another land. I've ridden far, hoping for the day when I'd find one fair as you. Oh. Please, don't run away. Now that I've found you, here's what I have to say. One song, I have but one song. One song, only for you. One heart tenderly beating, ever in my wishes in this matter, Master Huntsman? I do, Your Majesty. Tomorrow, as the shadows fall at dusk, take her far into the forest. Find some secluded glade where she can pick wildflowers. Yes, Your Majesty. And there, my faithful huntsman, you will kill her. Kill her? Your Majesty, the little princess. Silence. You know the penalty if you fail. Yes, Your Majesty. Kill her or die yourself. And to prove that you have done your part, bring back this casket, Huntsman, and in it, Snow White's heart. Master Huntsman, I think we have enough wildflowers now, don't you? Enough for a long time. Perhaps forever. Oh, what a lovely place this is. So quiet and peaceful. But I think we'd better leave now. It's growing late, Master Huntsman. See how the shadows fall. Long and slender. Master Huntsman, why do you stare at me like that? What's wrong? Come here. But I don't... Here. Look well around this place you love. That look will be your last. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. Forgive me. I beg you, Your Highness, forgive me. Why? I don't understand. She's mad. Jealous of you. She'll stop at nothing. But, but who? The queen. The queen? You must run away, child. Far away. Run and hide and never come back. Hide in the woods, anywhere. But go, go, go. I've made. But now that the sun's up, I'm not afraid. Will you forgive me? Oh, thank you. But you see, I'm all alone, and I've no place to go. Do you think that you could help me? If I only had a place to live. You don't know where such a place would be. Oh, I couldn't. 
live in a tree. <coughs> if you only knew of a house. Yes, a house. You do? Will you show me where it is? Yes, I'm ready now. Shall we go inside? Ooh, it's dark inside. Guess there's no one home. Hello? May I come in? Oh, what a cute little chair. That's right, seven little chairs. Must be seven little children. And from the look of this table, seven untidy little children. Look at what? Oh, a pickaxe. A stocking, too. And in the fireplace, a shoe. And just look at that fireplace. Why, it's covered with dust. And look, cobwebs everywhere. My, 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 what a pile of dirty dishes. And just look at that room. Why, they've never swept this room. You'd think their mother would... Oh, maybe they have no mother. Then they're orphans. Oh, that's too bad. I know. We'll clean the house and surprise them. Then maybe they'll let me stay. Now you wash the dishes. You tidy up the room. You clean the fireplace. And I'll use the broom. Just whistle while you work. And cheerfully together we can tidy up the place. But I'm still wondering about the seven little children who live here. They're not children. Well, what are they? What? Seven little men? Well, where are the little men? Away? At work? In a mine? Well, what do they do in the mine? Dig, 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 a mine the whole day through. Dig, 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 what we like to do. It ain't no trick to get rich quick. Dig, 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 we dig a diamond by the store, a thousand rubies, sometimes four. Well, they don't know what we dig them for, we dig, 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 dig. Listen, Ham, uh, uh, man. Uh, what you want, Doc? Uh, I think it's time we, it's smart, uh, Smith Quirk, uh, quit work. Uh, what do you say? Hooray! Come on, then, let's go home. I ho I ho I ho it's home for work we go. I ho I ho I ho I ho I ho it's home from work we go. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. It's home from work we go. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. Wait, man, stop. Look at our house. The lit's light. Uh, light's lit. Jimmy's dripping. The door's open, too. And the chimney's smoking. Something's in there. Maybe a ghost. Or a goblin. A demon. Or a dragon. What's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> it's all right, man. What is it? Dopey's knees knocking together. Dopey, quit that. You hear? Quit it. There. I suppose there really is a dragon in the house. Mark my words, there's trouble brewing. Felt it coming all day. My corn's hurt. Gosh. That's a bad sign. Well, what, what do we do? do? Yeah. Well, let's sneak up on it. Yes, uh, we'll squeak up. Uh, 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 sneak up. Uh, uh, come on, hen. Uh, uh, men. Follow me. Don't be quick, that, will you? Now, careful, men. Search every crook and manny, uh, hook and granny, uh, crook and pa uh, Search everywhere. Shh. Quiet. Look, the 
floor. It's been swept. Chairs been dusted. And our windows been washed. Gosh, our cobwebs missing. What? 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 The, the, the whole place is clean. <laughs> There's dirty work afoot. The sink's empty. Hey, someone stole our dishes. They ain't stole. They're hid in the cupboard. My cup's been washed. Sugar's gone. Something's cooking. Mmm, good. Smells good. Oh, look. Here, don't touch it, you fools. Might be poison. See? Witch's brew. Look, look what's happened to our stable. Uh, table. Flowers. There's flowers on the table. Huh? Look, goldenrod. Look, sneezy goldenrod. Oh, oh, don't do it. T -t -t Take them away. My doze. My hay fever. You, you know I can't stand no gold. gold. I can't. No, I can't. No, I can't. No, no. You gotta take me. You gotta take me. You gotta take me. You gotta take me. You crazy fool. Fine time you picked a sneeze. Well, I couldn't help it. I, I can't tell. When you gotta, you gotta. And I gotta. <laughs> I gotta. No, no, I can't no, stop no, it. No, 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 what am I gonna do? You better hold him tight. I got him tight. I got him tight. I got him tight. Oh, quiet, you fool. You wanna get us all killed? What's that? That's it. It sounded close. It's in this room right now. It's up there. Yeah, upstairs in the bedroom. Uh -huh. One of us has got to go down and chase it up. Uh, 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 up, down. Well, who's it going to be? I'm asking for volunteers, men. Happy? What about you? Uh -uh. Bashful? Uh -uh. Sleepy? Uh -uh. Grumpy? <laughs> Sneezy? With my hay fever? Go. So you won't go, eh? Well, that means... Um, mm, here, Dopey. Uh, take this lantern. Uh, don't, don't, don't be nervous. Don't be afraid. Go on now. Uh, up the snares, uh, the stairs. We're we're right behind you. Yes, right, right behind, behind you. you. Open the door, Dopey. Go on, go on, open the door and stop shaking like that. Now, now. Look, over there. Jiminy Crickets. God. Gee. What a monster. It's asleep. Covers three beds. Let's kill it before it wakes up. Which end do we kill? Shh. I'll take a good look at it. Uh, what is it? Why, it, it, it. It's a girl. Oh, a girl. girl. She's mighty oh. pretty. She's beautiful. Just like a angel. Angel? <laughs> She's a female. And all females is poison. They're full of wicked wiles. What are wicked wiles? I don't know, but I'm against them. Shh. Not so loud. You'll wake her up. Oh, let her wake up. She don't belong here no how. Oh, oh pull her out. She's moving. She's really waking up. Oh, what do we do? Uh, hide. Oh. Too late. Oh, gosh. Why? Why, you're the little man. How do you do? I said, how do you do? How do you do what? Oh, you can talk. I'm so glad. Now, don't tell me who you are. Let me guess. You don't know us. Oh, but I know your name. I saw them written on your bed. Now, let me see. That little man over there... You're a doc. Uh, why, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Oh, and you, you're bashful. Oh, God. <laughs> and you, you're sleepy. Oh, good guess. And you, it's, it's, you're it's, sleepy. <laughs> oh, yes, and you must be... Happy, ma'am, that's me. Uh, this is Dopey. He don't talk none. You mean he can't talk? He don't know. He never tried. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. But what's that bell around his neck? Oh, that? Oh, that, that, that's a cowbell. Uh, we just put that there in, in case he, he ever gets lost. Uh, show her what you glue, uh, goo. Show her what you do when you get lost, Dopey. No, oh, no, 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 no. The bell, the bell. That's right, that's right. See? He rings the cowbell. Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> cute. Ain't cute at all. Why, yes, it is. I say it ain't. Oh, you must be grumpy. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's who he is, all right. Hey, we know who we are. Ask her who she is and what she's doing here. <clears throat> yeah, uh, what are you and who are you doing? Uh, uh, what are you? Uh, uh, who 
are you, my dear? Oh, how silly of me. I'm Snow White. Snow White? The, the princess? princess? Yes. Well, well, well my, my, my dear princess, uh, princess, we're, uh, we're, we're honored. Yes, we're, uh, we're... Mad as hornet. Mad as hornet. No, we're not. We're as bad as cornet. No, no, as bad as... What was I saying? Nothing. Just standing there sputtering like a doodlebug. Who's a butter like a spoodle dog? Uh, who's a, a runner? Who, a oh, gunner? shut up and tell her to get out. Oh, please don't send me away. If you do, she'll kill me. Kill you? Who will? Yes, who will kill you? My stepmother, the queen. The queen? The queen. She's yes. wicked. She's bad. She's bitey bean. She's an old witch. I'm warning you. If the queen finds her here, she'll swoop down and wreak her vengeance on us. Oh, but she doesn't know where I am. She don't, huh? No. She knows everything. She's full of black magic. She can even make herself invisible. Might be in this room right now. Stop that. Stop it, Dopey. She finds her here. We're lost. Lost? Not you, Dopey. All of us. Oh, but you'll never find me here. And if you let me stay, I'll keep house for you. I'll wash and sew and sweep and cook. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Can you make lapple dumplings, uh, lumple dumplings? Uh, apple dumplings. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, crapple dumplings? Yes, and plum pudding and gooseberry pie. Oh, gooseberry pie. Oh, hey. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, you crazy fools. You're going to lose your heads over a gooseberry pie? I say she goes. I say she stays. I say she goes. I say she don't. She does. She don't. She will. She won't. Does. Don't. Does. Don't. Does. Don't. Does. don't. Oh, you're a pot-bellied old hop toad. He's a, I'm a, who, who's a, a belly potted old flop load? A hop jelly, a flop. You, jelly. you're a flop belly, a, a toad jump. Oh, you got me doing it. I say she stays. Yeah. How'd you like someone to twist your nose for you? Twist my nose or oh, you wouldn't dare. Oh, 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 oh. Stop, please, please, stop. Oh, don't let me break up your happy home. I'll go. Eh, good riddance. I'm not afraid of the dark woods at night and, and the goblins. The goblins? Think of the ghosts. Yeah. The demons are spooked. The dragons? Yeah, but think of our gooseberry pie. Yeah, yeah. Our, our gooseberry, gooseberry pie. pie. It'll taste mighty good. Raisins in the crust. Belt in your bowl. Can eat till you bust. Yeah. All right. We'll let her stay, but just till we get that pie. So ends the first act of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. During our brief intermission, let's take a flying trip from the land of fantasy to everyday life, to the home of our friends, the Browning family. It's the night after Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature is stirring. Except Dot and Midge. They're still up, having a little last-minute fun going over their presents. Gee, that music box is divine. Makes me think of moonlight and roses. Oh, wasn't Dad a lamb to give it to me? Yes, and wasn't Cousin Lou an angel to give me all this lovely lingerie? Oh, look at this nightgown, Midge. Isn't it sweet? Oh, it's adorable. Hold it up to you, Dot. Oh, look at it float. It's a dream, all right. Are you going to wear it tonight? Oh, my goodness, no. I'm going to keep all these things for my best. Why, girls, aren't you ready for bed yet? We can't decide what to wear, Mother. At least Dot can't. She wants to hoard all her lingerie. <laughs> Why, the things are so beautiful, Dot. I'm surprised you don't start right in wearing that lovely nightgown. Well, that's just it, Mother. They're all so lovely. I'm afraid to wash them too often, so I'm going to kind of save them. <laughs> oh, nonsense, dear. They look beautifully. You just wear them and get the use out of them. But you will use Lux Flakes, won't you? Oh, I will, Mother. And I hope you make it one of your New Year's resolutions, too, Midge. I solemnly swear that I will use Lux. Always Lux and nothing but Lux. And I won't forget. I hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> we'll hold you to that, Midge. And now, girls, get to bed. Good, Good night, night, Mother. Mother. Pleasant dreams. Yes, Dot can rest easy about her lovely new nightgown. And all her underthings, for that matter. Gentle Lux removes soil like magic, and at the same time leaves colors and materials looking like new. As Mother Browning knows so well, anything safe in water alone is safe in Lux. That's because there's no harmful alkali to hurt delicate fabrics or fade colors. Use Gentle Lux flakes for your own nice things, to keep them dainty and new-looking longer. Now, 
Here's our producer, Mr. DeMille. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs are ready to go on with their story. In our far-off world long, long ago, our princess fair with skin like snow was taken in as cook by the seven little men, by happy and bashful and sleepy and dark and sneezy and grumpy and dopey. She was taken in as cook in the house in the glen, and we hope she'll be happy with the seven little men. We hope she'll be happy as a young girl should with seven little men so kind and good. With happy and bashful and sleepy and dark and sneezy and grumpy and dopey. Knock on wood. It's supper time now in the cottage, and as softly as they're able, the seven dwarfs with gentle grace all tiptoe to the table. Oh, oh, just a minute, please. Supper's not quite ready. You'll just have time to wash. Wash? 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 I knew there was a catch to it. Why wash? What for? We ain't going nowhere. Tain't New Year. Oh, perhaps you have washed. Oh, perhaps, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, perhaps we have. But when? When? Uh, when? Uh, yeah, you said when. Uh, why, uh, or, uh, last week, uh, month, uh, year, uh, but why, uh, 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 recently. Yes, yeah, recently. Oh, recently. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Why, Doc, I'm surprised. <laughs> Come on, Bashful, let's see yours. Oh, that will never do. And Dopey? My, my, my. This is worse than I thought. Now, all of you run right outside and wash yourselves. Hmm? And don't forget behind the ears and what? under the beard. Oh. And comb your hair what? nice and what? neat. Yeah. Oh. Go on now, or you'll not get a bite to eat. Well, it's right. cold. <laughs> I, I, I guess we got to do it, man. Stand around the tub. We all got to wash. <laughs> Women. Courage, men. Courage. Uh, don't be nervous. Gosh, it's wet. <laughs> oh, it's, it's cold, too. We ain't gonna do it, are we? Well, it'll uh, it'll it'll please the, the princess. I say we take a vote. All right, we'll take a go. Uh, a vote. All in favor, hey, si, uh, say aye. Aye. Oh. What about Dopey? He don't count. Just two. <laughs> Listen, Dopey. If you're for pleasing the princess, ring your bell once. If you're not in flavor, uh, in favor, ring it twice. Understand? Hey, he understands. One ring for yes and two for no, eh, Dopey? Well, which is it? Uh, I told uh, you he uh, didn't see? count. I think we ought to wash anyhow. Me too. Me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Her wiles are beginning to work. But I'm warning you. You give them an inch and they'll walk all over you. Oh, don't listen to that old warthog. Come on now, man. Uh, how hard do you scrub? Will her whiskers shrink? Do you get in the tub? Do you have to wash where it doesn't show? Now, 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 don't get excited. Here we go. <laughs> Man, I, 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 I vote that the best supper I ever had. Me too, Doc. Me too. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you liked it. I, I can still taste that pie. Oh. <laughs> Gosh, I'm full. We're right up to here. <laughs> What's that, Grumpy? I said, <laughs> and your plate's lean, uh, clean. Well, you got to eat something after working all day. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> what do you say we... Go to bed. Not yet. Gosh, no, taint bedtime yet. I'm all set for a uh, banjeree. Uh, 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 uh. How about a song? Oh, yeah. oh, I'm happy. You're first. I like to dance and tap my feet, and they won't keep in rhythm. You see, I washed them both today, and I can't do nothing with them. Oh, <laughs> 
minute after I was born, it didn't have a 90. So I tied my whiskers round my legs and I used them for a di, a da, a di, a di, a di, a di, a di, a di, a a di, a di, a di, a di, I chased a bull cat up a tree way out upon a limb. And when he got the best of me, I got the worst of him. <laughs> oh, that was fun. <laughs> now, now, you do something. Well, what shall I do? Tell us a story. Yes, yeah. yeah. tell, tell us a story. A true story. A love story. <laughs> well... Once there was a princess. Was the princess uh, uh, you? And she fell in love. Was it hard to do? It was very easy. Anyone could see that the prince was charming. The only one for me. Uh, uh, was he uh, uh, strong and handsome? Was he, was he big and tall? There's nobody like him. Say he loved you. Did he steal a kiss? He was so romantic, I could not resist. Someday my prince will come. Someday we'll meet again. And the way to Twelve o'clock, uh, man. Mind for Ted. Uh, uh, time for bed. Oh, my. Yes. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams. Pleasant Begin thy magic spell. 
This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Hi, this is Porchlight Audience Services Manager, August Compton. Thank you for listening to WPMT. If you value programming like this, please consider making a donation today at porchlightmusictheater.org. We appreciate your consideration and hope you enjoy the show. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs have ended the second act of their adventures. They're not going away, though. They'll be here again in a very little while to continue telling you their story. That will be Act Three. Right now, in our intermission time, Mr. DeMille and our guest of honor are going to kind of talk things over. It's now my happy privilege to bring to the microphone one of the truly great men of the motion picture industry. Our distinguished guest is so well known that even to mention his name is utterly superfluous, like uh, gilding the lily. <laughs> well, thanks. Therefore, I will not mention his name. Uh -huh. Indeed, our, our guest is so modest and publicity shy that the mere mention of his forthcoming productions would send a shudder down his spine. Huh? Therefore, I'll refrain from any mention of them. Not even one? Instead, I'll, I'll let him interview me about my work. <laughs> I must say, this is rather unexpected. Oh, go on. Just ask me one little question about Union Pacific. What for? I know all about it. Now, Mr. Disney... Oh, <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, this, uh, this is Walt Disney. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Mr. Disney is now at work on his next uh, feature. And the title uh, is Pinocchio. Yes, and now and that I have you... another name, Bambi. Bambi, yes. And now that you... And then uh, Alice in Wonderland comes after that. Uh, yes, 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 yes. And now, if you please, if you please let me say just a word about my, my picture... You know, I've gotten a whole new slant from Union Pacific. It has thousands of miles of railroad track, hundreds of Indians, hundreds of assorted actors, all in authentic costumes, thousands of... Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. You forgot Lux. Hundreds of boxes of Lux. Back in the unwashed 60s? Never. Mm, no, no but, but Lux takes an active part in every DeMille production. It's the backbone of the wardrobe department. It helps those costumes start out fresh and clean every morning. But picking up where you left off, Walt. Well, seeing how tremendous your pictures are, if I had to make Snow White over again... I'd have 700 dwarfs instead of only seven. seven. I'd have 70,000. And they'd all be giants except one. And he'd be taller than the rest. And instead of buzzards following the old witch, I'd have bombing planes. Now, for a climax, 
the Wicked Queen sells Snow White a poisoned fruit stand. I think I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, you're all wrong, Walt. What people want is more fantasy, sweetness, whimsy. Or just call it more Snow White. I think what I could do with Union Pacific if I had the Disney touch. My hero could be a steam engine, a prince in disguise. One day as he was passing the roundhouse, he heard a sweet voice singing. And looking over the garden wall, he saw a beautiful coal car. Yes, Mr. DeMille, that's colossal. <laughs> and though she was a shabby coal car, she was really a princess. Her name was Snow White. No, Mr. DeMille, if you do, I'll sue you. They fall in love. <laughs> but the Great West in those days was a trackless wilderness. So one day, the handsome young locomotive says to his beloved, Baby, we gotta make tracks. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a crude way, that's the idea. But let's get serious, Walt. In making your pictures, do you follow any ironclad rules? Just one. Never do anything that somebody else can do better. That's why we ordinarily sidestep stories that could be done successfully in live action instead of animated action. And what about the future, as the art of animating human figures develops? <laughs> we'll never do Hamlet. And want to bet? <laughs> well, to be honest, our medium is so young and so unexplored and so fascinating that we have to guard against daydreaming. We have too many immediate problems. And I think my most immediate problem is to let you get back to the play. Uh, sit down then, Walt. But don't go away. Thanks, Mr. Mill. <laughs> we'll be calling on you a little later. Once again, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Through black of night, the jealous queen, her deadly charm devised, flies toward the cottage in the glen as a witch disguised. In fiendish glee, she swears with every breath, the poisoned apple shall be Snow White's death. <laughs> it's morning. At the doorway of the cottage in the glen stand Snow White and the seven little men. Eagerly, they wait their turn in line because they know each one will get a kiss as off to work they go. Now, uh, now, now, don't forget, my my dear. Don't forget what? The old queen's are the sly one. She's full of witchcraft. So beware of strangers. Don't worry, Doc. I will. And I'll have dinner all ready for you when you get back. Now, here's your kiss. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> uh, uh, come on, men. Let's go. And now you, Bashful. Now, now, be awful careful, because if anything should ever happen to you, I... Oh, <laughs> goodbye, Bashful. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, Dopey, of course there's a kiss for you. <laughs> now remember, princess, be sure to wa to wa wa to, to, to be sure to wa 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 to watch out. I'll be very careful. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, princess. Now, who's next? Oh, Dopey, didn't I just say goodbye to you? Well, all right, but it's the very last one. <laughs> Goodbye, sleepy. Goodbye, happy. And goodbye. <coughs> oh, grumpy. <coughs> now, 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 I'm warning you. Don't let nobody or nothing in the house. <coughs> Why, grumpy, you do care. Well, what if I do? Oh, grumpy, here. <coughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. 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 Why, Jopey, what do you mean by... Hi-ho, <laughs> hi-ho, in North Newark we go. Hi-ho, 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 in North Newark we go. Hi-ho, hi-ho. And oh, my prince will come, and who is it? Who is it? Just a minute. Oh, good day, my pet. Uh, all alone? Why, why, yes, I am, but... The little, uh, 
Man, they're not here. No, they're not, but... Mm, mm, making pies? Yes, gooseberry pies. It's apple pies that make the men folks' mouths water. Pies made from apples like this one. <laughs> oh, it does look delicious. Yes, but wait till you taste it, dearie. <laughs> like to try it? Mm -hmm. Go on, go on, have a bite. What did you say, Bird? But why shouldn't I eat it? Because why? Go away! Go away, you pesky bird! Go away! Oh, yeah. Don't hit them, please. What did you say, Bird? What was it? What did I say? I don't know. Something about telling the little men. The little men. The beastly little men. Oh, oh, my heart. Let me come in and sit down. Oh, why, why, of course. Thank you, my pet. And now, because you've been so good to poor old Granny, I'll share a secret with you. This is no ordinary apple. It's a magic wishing apple. A wishing apple? Yes. One bite and all your dreams will come true. Really? Yes, girly. Now, make a wish and take a bite. Oh, it looks awfully nice, but... Oh, there's a storm coming up. I'd better close the window. No, no, no. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Oh, there's plenty of time, my dear. Now, here's the apple, the wishing apple. There must be something your little heart desires. Perhaps there's someone you love. Well, there is someone. I thought so. I thought so. Old Granny knows a young girl's heart. Now, take the apple, dearie, and make a wish. I wish. I wish. That's it. Go on. Go on. I wish for my prince to come for me. I wish that, that he'll carry me away to his castle, where we'll live happily ever after. Fine, fine. Now take a bite. Don't let the wish grow cold. There, that's it. Did it taste good, my pet? <laughs> oh. oh, I feel so strange. Her breath will fill. Oh. Her blood congeal. Oh. The sleeping death. <laughs> she cannot stand. <laughs> now I'm the fairest in the land. <laughs> What's that? The little men return. I'm a hurry. Away. Away to the farthest mountain top, to a witch's lair. Let them follow if they dare. Which way did she go? There she is. Well, what you're standing here for? Up the mountain after her, men. Up the mountain. Come on. I see her now. It's starting to light the Don't let her get away. Get up. Around that cliff. She can't get down. Be careful, men. She's desperate. Watch out for that rock. She's rolling rocks down off the hill. Struck by lightning. Serves her right. Well, men, the wicked queen is dead. Good riddance, I say. Stop. Grumpy, stop. Happy, stop. Happy. Here's Happy. Good news, Happy. The lightning hit her and she fell off the cliff. She's dead. Well, why, why don't you cheer? I can't. Because Snow White, she's dead too. Well, there she is, ma'am. Don't she look pretty? Just like she wasn't dead at all. She, she looks so pretty. I, I can't think of burying her. No, we, we can't bury her, ma'am. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll build a, a, a glass coffin glass of gold. And we'll keep flowers around it all the time. Please. No golden rod. No. 
No, no golden rod. Sneezy, cause, cause I'm, I'm going to sit beside her and watch her all the time. Put the, the violets here, Sneezy. Uh-huh. And the sweet peas. There. Uh-huh. Dopey's daffodils. The side. Listen, man. Somebody's coming this way. They're riding a horse. What's he want? Tell him to go away. We can't do that. What? He, he's a prince. A prince? Sure. Look at his, look at his clothes. He's a prince, all right. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, morning my Highness. Highness. Is there something wrong? There are tears in your eyes. Snow White is dead. Uh, and there she lies. Snow White is dead? Yes, dead. And I've been searching far and wide. Here, well, let me kneel at her side. Oh, I'm so kneel, kneel. Oh, princess, ne'er was one so fair with snow white skin and raven hair. Oh, gosh, he's given her a kiss. He loves her. Gosh, then he's her prince. The one she spoke of in the story. Never mentioned his name since. Did someone call? The princess hey, spoke. Look, she's awake. Yeah, the spell is broke. She's going to live. She isn't high. Holy sleep. Just a charm. It was I who called. My prince. Well, Snow White, well, they thought you dead, these little men. I think I must have been. But then, you can't. Or did I only dream? Well, no dream. I did. I've searched for you so far. And I've been waiting for you so long. You knew I'd come? I knew. Someday. Someday, my prince. Goodbye, bashful and sleepy and sleepy. Goodbye. Oh, please, please don't be sad, little men. I'll be coming back again. You will? Once every year we'll meet. And I'll cook for you, too. And I'll make your house neat. Hooray! Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye. Goodbye. That prince, he better treat her right. We say goodbye to lovely Snow White and her fairy prince. And in just a moment, you'll hear Mr. DeMille in a personal chat with Walt Disney. But now, I'd like to give a little friendly advice to the women in our audience. All those nice underthings you got for Christmas. You want them to stay dainty and fresh and new looking a long time, don't you? Well, why don't you do what Mother Browning suggested? Why don't you plan to give all those lovely, fragile things the care they deserve? Gentle Lux care. Keep a box of Lux flakes on your bathroom shelf. And after every wearing, take your nice underthings and plunge them into a big bowl full of Lux suds. Those soft, pure suds whisk away every trace of soil and leave your things dainty and new-looking. There's no harmful alkali to hurt fine materials or fade delicate colors. In fact, Lux is safe for anything safe in water alone. Try it. Buy Lux flakes in the economical large size tomorrow. Now, Mr. DeMille. Picking up where we left off between the acts, here's Walt Disney to continue his animated conversation in a more serious vein. <laughs> You'll be sorry, Mr. DeMille. Tell me, just how old a story is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Well, it's so old that no one knows when or where it was first told. Is it true that it wasn't published until the Grimm brothers came along? Yes, just about a hundred years ago. Jacob Grimm was a very learned man, a scientist. You'd hardly think he'd go in for fairy tales. But just as a hobby, he and his brother collected a lot of old folk stories and legends. 
put them into a book and called the book Grimm's Fairy Tales. In their written form, Walt, fairy tales are supposedly only for children. But when you bring one to the screen, it captivates everyone. Age, language, race make no difference. What's the secret? Well, here's half an answer. Over at our place, we're sure of just one thing. Everybody in the world was once a child. We grow up. Our personalities change. But in every one of us, something remains of our childhood. You mean that's a common denominator? That just about sums it up, Mr. DeMille. The same level you speak of knows nothing of sophistication and distinction. It's where all of us are simple and naive, without prejudice and bias. We're friendly and trusting. And it just seems to me that if your picture hits that spot in one person, it's going to hit that same spot in almost everybody. So in planning a new picture, we don't think of grown-ups and we don't think of children. But just of that fine, clean, unspoiled spot down deep in every one of us that maybe the world has made us forget and that maybe our pictures can help recall. But when a picture maker turns philosopher, Mr. DeMille, it's time for him to quit. <laughs> so thanks for your swell treatment of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Uh -huh. Good night. Good night. That was Walt Disney, whose magic turns a theater ticket into a grand adventure. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a word about our program for next Monday night. The past year has seen Errol Flynn rise to the heights of Hollywood stardom. In successive films like The Perfect Specimen, Robin Hood, and Dawn Patrol, he's proved himself a master of romantic comedy, adventurous melodrama, and straight dramatic roles. We hear this versatile and dashing gentleman next Monday night in the first of these hits, The Perfect Specimen. And co-starred, as she was in the picture, is another favorite, the delightful Joan Blondell. And so the Lux Radio Theater says goodbye to 1938. We who are behind the scenes are not alone in making these presentations possible. If our efforts have brought you pleasure, won't you remember that in the Lux Radio Theater is the means taken by the makers of Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap to show their gratitude for your loyalty to these fine products. All of us then work together. And in 1939, our goal is again your entertainment and your friendship. A year of greater joys to be shared with you in the Lux Radio Theater. From all of us goes the hope that the new year will light your hearts and homes with happiness and health. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Errol Flynn and Joan Blondell in Perfect Specimen. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Lois Hilton has appeared for courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio, where he directed music for the new film, Kentucky. Your announcer has been Melville Roick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. In case you're wondering why an alternate actor was used for Snow White in this broadcast, Walt Disney wanted to keep the character's voice as a special one-time sound, and held Adriana Casalotti, who originated the role, to a very strict and frankly controversial contract. Except for a tiny bit part in 1939's The Wizard of Oz, heard in the Tin Man song, Wherefore art thou, Romeo? She never had a part in a movie again, and when Jack Benny wished to have her appear on his radio show, Walt refused. But even in her contractual indenture, she was always active in the publicity surrounding the many re-releases of Snow White, and in 1967, 30 years later, she returned to the Disney Studios for another recording session to tape some Snow White dialogue that allowed children to dial a conversation with their favorite Disney characters, including Mickey Mouse, Goofy, Donald Duck, and Pinocchio. A special Academy Award was given to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves that consisted of one standard-size Oscar statuette and seven miniature statuettes on a stepped base. 
Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was the first of many Walt Disney films to have its New York City engagement at Radio City Music Hall. At the end of the film's initial run there, all the velvet seat upholstery had to be replaced. It seems that young children were so frightened by the sequence of Snow White lost in the forest that they consistently wet their pants, and consequently the seats at each and every showing of the film. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was the first film to ever have a soundtrack recording album released for it. Prior to 1937, a movie soundtrack recording was unheard of and with very little value to a movie studio. Storyboards for a sequel to the film were discovered in the Disney Company vault, titled Snow White Returns. The reason for why this sequel never went further than pre-production is anyone's guess, and it's unknown if Walt Disney really wanted the project to be made in the first place. A stage adaptation of Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs premiered at the Muni in St. Louis in 1969 and returned in 1972. Following that, a production opened at the Radio City Music Hall on October 18, 1979, running for 106 performances. A video recording of this live performance was available on VHS and Betamax from Walt Disney Home Video in 1981. In a January 1938 interview, Walt Disney lamented that he and his staff had learned so much from making Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs that he said... I wish I could yank it back and do it all over again. Theaters across the country need your support now, more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber. Music